your grace when I sing it out. Yeah, 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 sing it out. By grace. By grace. Hey, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you doing tonight? Okay, I'll give you another opportunity. How are you guys doing tonight? Oh, okay, there are people here. I just thought, you know, maybe because of COVID-19, you were used to not having to uh, respond. Why don't you stand up to your feet? It's good to be back in the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, but there's just something about being in his presence with other people. I can tell you, if you lead in worship, it is weird when no one is in the building except the sound crew and they're like playing video games back. No, I'm just kidding. They're not, they're not actually playing video games. They're working really, really hard to make sure stuff goes right. So, But it is great to have you guys back in the house. And I believe that what the Lord wants to do, whether you are streaming with us still or you are here tonight, what the Lord wants to do when his people gather together is just be exalted. That this is about him. It's not about a, it's not about a church. It's not about a, a logo. It's not about any other banner but the name of Jesus. Come on, it's his presence that breaks chains and bondage and fear in your life. That's the only hope that we have. It's the name of Jesus. So, Lord, I thank you that everyone that hears the sound of my voice, Lord, I thank you that we position our mind and our will and our emotions to be in a position of surrender to you, Jesus. Father, your word is great because it says that you actually inhabit the praises of your people. And so tonight, Lord, as we praise you and exalt you and lift up your name, Lord, you actually inhabit very atmosphere in which we are praising you. Father, I thank you for all that you're doing in us, through us, around us, in our communities, in our homes, in our blocks, in our neighborhoods. Lord, wherever our feet go, Lord, we thank you that you're moving and you make us part of it. Come on, if you believe that, would you shout amen tonight? That was a pretty weak amen. Come on, would you shout amen tonight?
victory in your life. Come on. Well, I got news for you. Your prayer has been answered. The victory has already been won. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, we sing this out. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't breathe in. Cause the gossip knows only how to triumph Oh my God, will never fail Oh my God, will never fail Come on, we're going to see it
we thank you that our freedom is found in you. Lord, everywhere that we search, every other person that we search, Lord, any situation or, or place in life, Lord, it will always let us down. Lord, tonight we make a conscious effort, deliberate action. We give you our hope, Lord. We give you our trust. We thank you, Lord, that you shower us with your freedom and your joy and your peace and your presence, Lord. Lord, we surrender it all. Lord, we lay our lives down at your feet. It's where we are found when we are lost in you, God. Have your way, Jesus.
in his presence is here so tangible, so powerful, but just reach out.
isn't he so good? Come on, isn't his presence so accessible? I just felt the Holy Spirit would have us. Just press into it tonight. Come on, worship's not a song. It's not a methodology of a verse or a chorus. Come on, it comes straight from your heart of worship. Whether you know one word or no words, whether you know what to say or sing or not, it comes from our heart to Him. That's true worship. That's authentic worship.
Father, this evening we thank you that you've saturated this place. There's been a shower of your presence. Lord, we needed it. We're thankful for it, that you'd pour out the rain of your spirit upon us. We thank you for the freshness of your presence tonight. Thank you that you give us a drink from the river of your pleasure. You said, ho, anyone who thirsts, let him come and drink. We're drinking from the well of salvation, drinking from the well of living waters, drinking from the well of the Spirit of God. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians that we've all been made to drink of the same Spirit. We're taking a drink tonight by the Holy Ghost. A drink of refreshing, a drink of healing, a drink of stability, a drink of provision, a drink of peace, a drink of joy in the Holy Ghost, joy that's unspeakable and full of glory, the joy of the power of God manifested in and through us. We take a drink tonight of the river of your pleasure. We take a drink tonight of the Spirit of God. Thank you for being here tonight, Father. just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. There is such a manifestation of the anointing when we just took a moment and sang in the Spirit. Praise you. Sila mando boko shota basa. Hibla na mando boko shoto boso kada mando no boko shi. Hobla na mando boko shoto boso kada mando no boso Father Jude said that we build ourselves up, build ourselves up. We build ourselves up. We build ourselves up. Jude told us to build ourselves up in our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Thank you. There's a power imparted into us, a strength, a stability imparted into us as we pray in the Spirit. Si bambando boko shoto boko tabamando. Si bambando boko shoto boko tabamando. We're filled with the Holy Ghost. We're not ashamed of the Holy Spirit. We're not ashamed of being Pentecostal. We're not ashamed of praying with other tongues. We're not ashamed of the gospel. We're not ashamed of the power of God. We're not ashamed of the delivering hand of God. We're not ashamed of the redeeming hand of God, the providing hand of God. We're not ashamed. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Siki bo shota banda rabando boko shota banda. She blando boko boko. Come on, church, pray. He banda bo shobo kota rabanda. He anda ba shobo kota bo shota rabanda. Holy, holy, holy. He boko dana mando boko shota basa. She blanda no boko to bo shota banda. Jesus said, out of your belly will flow rivers, rivers, streams, rivers of living water. He said, he who takes a drink after me, out of his belly will flow rivers, rivers. Father, we thank you for unplugging, breaking free the dam. In Jesus' name tonight. Don't quit on me. Keep praying. Siki bosho tamando bosho koda namando. Shila mando boko soto bota rabanda na bos. Holy, 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 holy. Shila mando boko shota mando. Shibo koda namando na bos. Siki dala dala bosho. Ila mando boko soto bosho dala dala bos. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father, thank you that we can pray in tongues. Thank you that we can pray in an unknown language. Praise you, Jesus. Just hear the Lord saying tonight that for many of you it's been a long time since you've walked in a little deeper since you've taken the time to pursue me in the spirit and I hear the Lord edifying and encouraging you to say come on in more often I missed you come on in a little more frequently I like seeing you I like walking with you and fellowshipping with you this way now the response for us is to receive that encouragement if repentance is necessary then repent Lord I repent it's been a while since I've sang in the spirit it's been a while since I've prayed in the spirit and then the change because repentance means to change your heart and change your ways the change is then you just start singing in the spirit more frequently and praying in the spirit more frequently so Lord we just that simple prophecy, according to the New Testament, edify and exhortation in comfort. That simple prophecy to edify, to exhort, to comfort. We respond to you and say, we'll, we'll come visit you more frequently. We'll come visit you more frequently. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You want to do it again right now? Well, let's pray in the Holy Ghost for a moment longer. Praise the Lord. She cabasso boto do boda da man. He blow bo shoto bo so coda da man. She blow co so taba da 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 Holy, holy, holy Lord. He lana da bo co so taba si he blow ta da man. So blow co so to bo ta da man. She he da 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 bo ta da bo so da da man. Holy, holy, holy. Father, we fill up the vessel. We fill up the vessel by praying in the Holy Spirit. You pour out on us as we pursue you, and it's as we will. 
praying in the Spirit is as we will. It's our own volition. Paul said, what is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with understanding also. I will sing with the Spirit. I will sing with the understanding also. But as we make that decision to pursue you in that way, to step in deeper in that way, we fill ourselves up. We build ourselves up on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Thank you. You've made a way for us to never be weak. You've made a way for us to never be without strength, to never be without hope, to never be without joy, to never be without peace, to never be afraid. You've made a way for us. Simply just begin to pray in our heavenly language. How be it then in the natural, our understanding is unfruitful. We're not saying syllables of known languages. We're speaking a heavenly language that was given to us by the Spirit of God. It's the voice of our spirit speaking directly to God who is a spirit. Our understanding being unfruitful. We speak mysteries unto God, not unto man, unto God. Praying in tongues, as we'll see tonight, because I just received direction. Praying in tongues and in my heavenly language requires zero interpretation, none whatsoever. It's not for man. It's not to edify the body. It's not to edify the church. It's not to help the church. It's not to be equal to prophecy, that's the manifested public gift of speaking in tongues, which requires the interpretation. This is just us, one-on-one, -on -one, our spirit to you, Father, speaking directly to you. When words fail us, when our mind and our intellect fail us, we haven't even begun to run out of things to say. Praise you, Jesus. See them by the book of Shodamas. He la mando boko so that I see he will go so. Shanna la mando boko so. Praise you. Praise you. If you're streaming tonight on Facebook, start praying in tongues if you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Get in on what God's doing here. Do what we do here. If we're clapping, clap. If we're shouting, shout. If we're worshiping, worship. If we're praying in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Ghost. If we're in the book, get in the book. Let the presence of the living God flood wherever you are, your bathroom, your bedroom, your living room, your kitchen, your car. In Jesus' name. And you might say, well, Pastor Brian, I don't know how to pray in the Holy Spirit. I'm not filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself said very plainly, very, very, very plainly, that if we'd ask the Father, he would give us the Holy Spirit. Very plainly. He said, you being evil, when your child asks for what he's asking for, you give it. How much more will the Father give you the Holy Spirit when you ask of him? So right there, wherever you are, just say, Father, I believe according to the word of God that this gift is for me. And then you desire to give it to me. So I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit come and overtake and indwell me a new and a living way, a fresh way. Fill me with the Holy Spirit that I'd have the evidence of praying in other tongues. You might be here tonight and say, well, I'm not sure if I've been filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't know if I pray in tongues. Well, come up here if you want to. It's real easy. Well, what about social distancing? I'll still lay hands on you. I'm not afraid. If you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, come on. We'll do it right now. In fact, I dare you. Amen. All right, then. People are coming up. I can't see a thing. right praise you Jesus praise you Jesus praise you Jesus praise you Jesus now listen church if you 
need to sit down because you've been on your feet. That's understandable. Don't disconnect. Don't unplug. Be seated if you want. The worship team is going to continue to serve the Lord and help us. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Kent, come on up here if you would. Pastor Dana, will you come up here? Praise the Lord. Don, turn my microphone down. I'm almost feeding back. Please. Check, check, test, test, down. Praise the Lord. I'm going to wait just a lo moment longer. If you're here and you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, now's a good time. In fact, it's the best time. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Church, if you just begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. to talk about this just in prayer the bible tells us very plainly that apart from salvation and apart from water baptism there's another gift that god has to give to his children and that is the gift of the holy spirit jesus himself after he was raised from the dead and ascended into heaven he received the holy spirit of the father and then gave as many as would call and ask for the holy spirit jesus said when you pray and ask ask in my name and the Father will give it to you. He'll give him to you. Now, praying in tongues is not a natural thing. It's not something that you make up. It's not something that you think up. The devil will try to tell you that. But it's something that comes out of your spirit. trying to convince someone, well, you're not good enough. <laughs> I don't know if it's one of these people up here or if it's someone out there. You're not good enough. You're not good enough to receive that. That's a lie. If you had to be good enough, we're all disqualified. <laughs> Praise you. you grab Marco and just slide over a little bit and pray with him to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Are we praying with you, Kim? You're filled with the Holy Spirit. We're praying for Brent. Pastor Dana, come on. You guys do what's in your spirit. Mandy, if you have a song from the Lord, go ahead and sing it.
a moment longer. Let's just pray in the Holy Spirit for a moment longer. Praise you, Jesus. prayed personally for two of these. I heard from Kent the witness that Marco received the Holy Spirit and prayed with other tongues. I heard Brent pray in tongues. I heard Blake pray in tongues. So three people came and three people were filled. Yeah, you should clap. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. But you're faithful. Now, you guys that came forward, I want to say this to you. Listen, it's important. Probably before you leave here tonight, the devil's going to lie to you and tell you that that wasn't real and that you made that up. I'm going to say this to you, and you need to listen. Thank you. I'm not going to tell you that that might happen. I'm going to tell you that that will happen. And when it happens, you need to say out loud, no, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Because what's going to happen is, is that he will try to convince you you weren't and then steal the gift of God from you. So listen to your pastor, if I am him, and hear this. When that thought comes, and it will come, maybe before you leave the property tonight, that you weren't filled with the Holy Spirit, that you don't get it. I don't understand what that was all about, and I just made that up, and that wasn't real. I've been doing this for 26 years. I can't count how many people I've prayed for. Every single person I've ever prayed for has been filled with the Holy Spirit and prayed with tongues. I'm what they call an expert at this. You, if I prayed for you, you prayed in tongues. I heard it. So if you don't trust you, trust me. But say out of your mouth, no, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. My pastor said I was. Amen. There's power in that. And I would also encourage you, if you have your Bible, I would write right on the front of it, on the inside cover. Don't be like John. Write in your Bible. He's doing it now, praise God. Write right on there. Today's date, May 27th, is that correct? May 27th, 2020, I was filled with the Holy Spirit, and I prayed in tongues. Now, if you would have found this Bible, 
before I had it redone and recovered. I was on the inside of my Bible. I was 12 years old. Go ahead and sit down. I was 12 years old at the Grand Assembly of God. I gave my life to the Lord at a young age. And I was filled with the Holy Spirit when I was 12 with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. And in my, on the inset of my Bible, I wrote that down, the date that I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And there are times after that happened that the enemy would come and try to tell me that you're just making that up, you don't know any different. And I said, no. No, that preacher who's an expert, he prayed with me to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And he said that he heard me pray in tongues. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. Devil pack, you're trash. Hit the bricks. Amen. I, can, I can't make you do it, but I'm telling you that you're going to have that doubt. It's going to come. And when it does, you have a choice. You can say, no, my pastor told me I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. He told me I prayed in tongues, so mine shut up. You don't know more than my pastor does. Amen. Boy, it's important to know who your pastor is. I'm just preaching good. Amen. Praise the Lord. One more time. Father, thank you. I believe that there are people who are streaming online tonight that were filled with the Holy Ghost. They say, what are all those people making all that noise? And then, boom, gotcha. Why not? You hang out on the riverbank long enough, sooner or later that thing is going to swell and you're going to slip in. So thank you, Father. Thank you for the gift of speaking with other tongues. We bless you and we exalt you. Thank you for moving tonight. This all happened because Nick was obedient to you, Father. This whole entire thing came unplugged because Nick Pydick took a moment and followed the leading and the wooing of your spirit. So thank you for sensitive people who hear from you. Thank you for hungry people who come and eat. Thank you for a body of believers who won't get tired and shut down, but they'll stay hooked up and pressing in together. Because when one wins, we all win. Thank you for church. I'd rather be here tonight than any place. Thank you for church. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, clap good for the worship team. Praise the Lord. I have some notes that I wanted to study notes, not preaching notes, but in my olive tree, uh, I have some definitions and some language and things of that nature. And uh, I went to turn on my iPad and it was dead. Praise God, the Bible's never dead. Amen. 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 I hope you're never dead. <laughs> Amen. Being dead is not good. But thank God for the Holy Ghost. Nick, three people got filled with the Holy Spirit tonight because you decided to not screw it up. So thanks. It wasn't just Nick. Mandy was over there saying, don't screw this up, man. We're so blessed. You know, I could get a band. I could pay them money. There are churches that pay people money to play on their band. We could get a band. They might even be better than them. I don't know that that's true, but they could be, maybe, depending on how much money Jim gives toward it. But I'll take Nick Pydick over. Anybody I've ever worked with, and Mandy Pydick, and Jordan, and Joe, and Kenzie, and Emily, and Kayla, and Seth, and Justin. Because we don't just have a band. We have a worship team. And they minister to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. You ready to get into the Word tonight? Yeah. What's funny is I'm going to talk about what we just did. So if you don't like it, blame Nick. <laughs> Father, thank you for the Word. Help us see. Help us understand. Help us walk away with a greater degree of understanding, a greater degree of revelation than we came here with, even myself. I want a greater degree of understanding. I want a greater degree of revelation than when I walked in the door. So open up my eyes. Open up our eyes. Open up our ears. We would see and we would hear what it is that you want us to see and hear. 
And may we grow line upon line, precept upon precept. We'll give you the glory and the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. And if you agree with that, say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to work in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And I don't have a watch on tonight. So if I preach long, it's my watch's fault. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul is writing this letter to the church in Corinth by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God spoke to him and said, Listen, you've got to get in here into this situation and you've got to fix some things. What we find if we study the, the epistles to the church in Corinth, first of all, there are more than two, but we only have them two. There's at least three, maybe four different times where Paul addresses these guys. And we just put it together and smashed it. And so whatever. But for the sake of time, I won't get into that. But, but the Holy Spirit's talking about this church and says that this church in particular is more zealous and more desiring the gifts of the Holy Spirit than any other church that Paul worked with. But yet, because they didn't understand and because they didn't act appropriately, the Spirit of God had to give them a rebuke through the Apostle Paul to get it right, to get it fixed, to make adjustments and to to do things that would be edifying to the body and to be helpful for the church and to not, not be disrespectful and to not run amok of what God was doing because the move of the Holy Spirit is always masterful. It's always beautiful. It's never crazy. You should say amen to that. That's really good preaching. The move of the Holy Spirit is always beautiful. It's always masterful. It's never chaotic and it's never crazy. And if it is chaotic and crazy, chances are really good that the attention's either been drawn to a man by a man or to a demon by a demon. It's real profound. But any time the move of the Holy Spirit is being released, it's always bringing attention, the move of the Holy Spirit is always bringing attention to Jesus. And so the move of the Holy Spirit is perfect and it's beautiful and it's masterful. And so the Apostle Paul is getting this instruction from the Spirit of God saying they're making a mockery of things of God and they're making mistakes and they don't understand what they're doing and they're out of order and they're out of line and we need to get this established and we need to get this fixed and we need to help them. So write them this letter. And so it opens up this portion of the epistle and he says in verse 1, Now concerning spiritual gifts is italicized. It wasn't there in the beginning. Now concerning spiritual brother, and I would that you not be ignorant. Say ignorant. Ignorant doesn't mean dumb. It means uneducated or unlearned. Doesn't mean that you don't have the capability or capacity. It means you just haven't had the opportunity. Amen. Doesn't, it has nothing to do with your capacity. It has everything to do with your opportunity. So brethren, concerning spiritual, I would that you not be... Who, who's writing this again? Who's, who's really writing this? Holy Spirit. Concerning spiritual brethren, I would not you, that you would be ignorant. For you know that you were Gentiles, carried away to these dumb, not stupid, but not speaking, not being able to articulate gods. However, you were led. Therefore, I make known to you, verse 3, right off the top, the Holy Spirit wants everybody who will pay attention and anyone who will listen he wants us to know that nobody's going to get up here and say anything negative about Jesus and have it be the Holy Spirit. That's important because what we try to hear sometimes through denominational deniers or people who believe that the cessation or ceasing of the move of the Spirit, they say, well, you know, when you're praying in an unknown tongue, how do you know that you're not saying something to curse Jesus? Well, because the Spirit of God said no one speaking by the Spirit of God, would ever say that Jesus is a curse and never say anything negative about him. And nobody, by the way, is able to even say that Jesus is Lord except for by the Holy Spirit. Now, we're already, we're already getting help. But wait, there's more. Verse 4, there are diversities. Say diversities. So this means various kinds. There are various kinds of gifts but it's the same Spirit. There are various kinds of gifts. That's important for us to understand. 
verse 5. There are differences in their ministry. In other words, they don't all do the same thing. They're not all for the same reason. But it's the same Lord. Verse 6. There are diversities of activities. They'll function differently. When they're being seen, you'll see them act differently. But it's the same God who works all in all. Verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. As we were praying in the Holy Spirit tonight and singing in the Holy Spirit tonight, I just heard this question come up in my, in my, to my spirit or from my spirit from someone either in the room or streaming. And that was, where's the interpretation? And I thought, well, that's interesting. Or maybe even further, which I did hear this again, how come they're not interpreting that? Now, if you're here, don't raise your hand. You could, it doesn't matter. Um, and if you're streaming, don't raise your hand. You could, it wouldn't matter. We don't, we don't really care. But I'm going to try to help you if I can. So verse 7, you may think, well, this is just too simple. And what can we possibly read in verse 7 and learn? And the answer to that is a whole lot, a whole bunch. So the manifestation of the Spirit, everybody say Spirit. Spirit. Now, in my Bible, that's a capital S, which means deity. It's speaking about the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of grace, the Holy Spirit, the third part of the Trinity, right? So the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. It's important that we take a moment and understand we're going to read through here and we're going to be discussing spiritual gifts that are given to each one for the profit of everybody. So what we're looking at in this verse 7 is actually a definition or a qualifying statement. And it's important that we don't overlook it. Because later on in this chapter, and then the beginning of the second or the 13th chapter, and then on carried on in the conversation in the 14th chapter, Paul's going to talk about the difference between what we were doing here tonight, which is the personal prayer language or the, the gift of praying in tongues. We laid hands on three people and they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Many of you were praying in tongues or singing in the Spirit as Nick was leading us by the Holy Spirit. And that is not a manifestation of the Spirit. That's a manif manifestation of our spirit, little s. Not big s. See, so here's a qualifying statement and a defining moment where we can look and say, which requires the Spirit of God to be involved, active, and which will not require necessarily. And I quoted that while we were in prayer. Paul said, what is it then? I will. It's a volition. It's I make a decision. I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit. I will sing with the understanding. There's nowhere mentioned when Paul says that where the Spirit of God said, okay, you go now. It's your turn. Amen. So the manifestation of the Spirit, that's important. The manifestation of the Spirit, given to each one for the profit of all, for the profit of the body. Amen. Now he lists these gifts of the Spirit, for to each one or to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another, working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. And to another, the interpretation of those tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all. Say all. So he's doing all this. One and the same Spirit works all these things, and He, the Holy Spirit, is distributing to each one as He wills. Now, you may not understand, but what the Lord gave me about encouraging us to pray more in the Holy Spirit is New Testament prophecy. That was the physical, public, spiritual gift of prophecy 
that was released by the Spirit of God to me to edify, encourage, and, and strengthen each one of us, anyone who's listening. That's prophecy. A lot of people think that prophecy has to be, thus saith the Lord. A lot of people also believe that prophecy is predictive. And that's not true. That's the Old Testament and the office of a prophet, not the New Testament, and the gift of the Holy Spirit of prophecy. How do I know that? My Bible tells me so. Well, don't look at me in that tone. Yours does, yours does too. Amen. So again, we're talking about the gifts of the Spirit. There are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And in these nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, one way for us to break these down and categorize them to help us is to think about there are three gifts that say something. Say. Everybody say, say. There are three gifts that say something. Do you know what those are? Does anybody remember what those are? Prophecy speaks. Tongues speaks. And interpretation of tongues speaks. Three gifts say some things. What do they say? They say what the Holy Spirit tells them to say. Well, when do they function? Whenever the Holy Spirit wants them to. Well, to whom, through, through whom will they function? Whoever the Holy Spirit asks to function. Why? Because this is the manifestation of the Spirit. It's not my will. It's His will. I've had people say, well, Pastor Brian, how come I don't function in the gifts of the Spirit? You should ask the Holy Spirit that question. You're asking me. I have answers. <laughs> I can, t I can give you answers as to why, but you ought to ask the one who's distributing the gifts. Oh, and by the way, don't just call it in and say, well, he just doesn't want to choose me. And that's what Paul said. It's not what Paul said. We don't have time to get into that, but that's not what he said at all. That's a misunderstanding of the word of God. It's taking things that he never said and building a whole entire doctrine on something that doesn't even exist. Moving right along. If you don't function in the gifts of the Spirit, ask the Holy Spirit why you don't. If you want to start functioning in the gifts of the Spirit, ask the Holy Spirit if you can. Stop blaming your pastor. Stop blaming the worship team. Well, you know, if they just get a little more hot in here, then the Holy Ghost will be... No, maybe it's you. You bring some heat. Amen. Oh, no, he's talking that way again tonight. You ready to keep going? There are three gifts that see something. Three gifts that say something. Three gifts that see something. Word of wisdom. A word of wisdom is a part or a portion of God's wisdom. The best way for us to explain it is that if you can imagine taking like a snow globe with a picture of something in life and then put a veil on it. And a word of wisdom is God just takes up the veil a little bit and lets you see and then puts it back down. It's not happening right now. It's going to happen in the future. It's not anything that you could predict, but God just pulls the curtain back just a little bit and lets you see something. Maybe you've had this experience before in prayer and you didn't understand what it was. Maybe you saw yourself talking to somebody just in prayer. You're praying, maybe hopefully in the spirit. And all of a sudden, you saw yourself talking to someone you've never met before, you've never seen before, and then you walked away. And then an hour later, two days later, a week later, you walk up, and here you are talking to this person that you just saw. Ever had that happen before? That's a word of wisdom. He pulled the curtain back so you could see something. Because he sees from the beginning all the way to the end. So it's a gift that sees. It's a revelatory gift. Another gift that sees something is the word of knowledge. A word of knowledge is the ability to know by the Spirit of God something that you could know by your five physical senses, but you didn't see it or hear it or understand it or smell it. The Spirit of God revealed it to you. And what that means is, I'll give you this example, and this has happened to me before in church. My shoe's untied. You could be in prayer or driving down the road, and you see often, by the way, uh, I see in the spirit a word of knowledge of what the Lord wants to do in the present moment. And then I know we're going to have people. I knew people were going to get filled with the Holy Spirit tonight. I didn't know who. But in worship, I wasn't singing at all. I've been praying in the Holy Spirit the whole time I was in the room. And the Lord showed me just a word of knowledge, a picture of in the moment, the present moment, that people are going to come forward and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Cool. I guess we need to start praying in tongues then if that's going to happen. 
and then Nick, without me like giving them the the you know Eagle Scout signs, <laughs> he picked up on that by the Holy Ghost, and lo and behold, the Spirit of God moved, and he had his way. So a word of knowledge is something like this. You might be in a church service like this. You might say, you know, there's somebody here, and I don't know who you are, but there's somebody here, and I saw you standing on a front porch about three hours ago. You had a pair of blue jeans on and a green T-shirt. And I heard you say when you're pointing at a car driving by, blah, 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 blah. If that's you, come forward. Now, how many people are in the room tonight, Jamie? I don't know, 70 total in the building probably? 50, 60 here? Nailed it. He's all over it. Praise the Lord. Chances are super high that not everybody's going to come and respond to that. That's fairly specific. Let me think. Was I on a front porch today wearing a pair of blue jeans and a green shirt? Let me think. Did I point at a car driving by the road or in my driveway and say the following things? Okay, that's me. Obviously, it's not the rest of you unless you were all standing on a front porch in blue jeans and a green shirt pointing at a car in your driveway or driving by the road and said something. Right? Does that make sense? So... What does that mean? I saw something by the Spirit of God that I could have saw with my natural eyes. But I didn't see it with my natural eyes because I wasn't driving by the house. The Holy Spirit opened up, pulled the curtain back, and this time he showed me something having to do with the person, place, or thing in the present or in the past. So he causes me, causes us, causes you to see something in the Spirit. And it's information that you could have understood by hearing it. You could have drove by and watched someone standing on their front porch. They had a green shirt and a pair of blue jeans, and they were pointing. You couldn't quite hear what they said, but you saw it all happen. You'd be like, you're never going to believe this. The other day, I was driving to the church, and I saw them standing on their front porch, and they had a green, and they're pointing at cars driving by. So you can catch that with your physical senses, but this is revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. And then the third thing, the third aspect of a gift that sees something is discerning of spirits. Everybody say spirits. Not discerning of demons. Discerning of spirits. There is not, trust me, there's not a demon behind every door. They're not in doorknobs. Amen. And this spiritual gift is not for you to be able to see demons. Now, if you ever see an angel... The manifestation of the gift of the Spirit of God, of discerning of spirits, was given to you in that moment. And you saw an angel. Uh, I believe this with all of my heart. If you have seen an angel, you don't need to wonder about maybe. You'd know. You texting in church? What? 65 people. I think I said 70. Thank you, Jamie. You know what happened? From that front chair. Someone give me that number quick. (laughs) Anyway, if you see an angel, if you see a demon, and not your wife or your spouse or your mother-in-law, but a true bona fide demon, not a dog you wish was dead or any cat that you ever see, but an actual messenger of darkness, then that was the discerning of spirits. If you see the motive and intent of a person's heart, you don't have the ability to discern. The Spirit of God is causing you to see using the gift of discerning of spirits. Now, it's important because everybody and their brother talks about, you know, I just have the gift of discernment. Find me that in the book. I mean, it sounds really cool. And I'll bet preachers sell whole sermon series on it, write books about it, probably even do DVDs and movies about it. It's just not in the Bible. You like that, I can tell. So discerning of spirits is the ability of the Holy Spirit given to a person that he wills at the time that he wills and opens up their eyes to see into the spirit realm. They can see a demon. They can see an angel. They can see a motive of someone's heart. Amen. It's not intuition if you're filled with the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God showed it to you. 
But also, if you come across a guy who looks like the Unabomber, chances are good that's not the discerning of spirits functioning that tells you to get away. You've just seen images on Netflix. And you know that that dude's going to kill people with bombs and you don't want to be a part of his plan, right? I'm talking about it's spiritual, it's supernatural. Why are we talking about this? Because the Holy Spirit said so. What if you're not helping anybody? That's not my problem. (laughs) Three gifts that say. Three gifts that see. Then there are three gifts that do. Some people call them power gifts. Gifts that, that there's a physical outward manifestation of God's power. It's supernatural and through physical people. A working of miracles. You see someone do something that's impossible. It's the working of miracles. Now I'm talking about supernatural by the Holy Ghost, not demonically in, 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 uh, empowered. Faith, the gift of faith isn't just, oh, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. But there's a gift of faith that comes upon you that is given to you by the Holy Ghost. And you can't figure out how. I'm not talking about believing God for your electrical bill. The gift of faith comes on you, and it's as if you could walk through a building but not enter the front door. And that you're taller than the building. And you just... I mean, you're, it's like this superhuman, because it's supernatural, this superhuman ability comes on you, and I can walk through a wall. I can jump and leap over a, a, a wall, and I can run through a, a whole troop. The gift of faith was on David when he said, this circumcised, un, uncircumcised Philistine who comes against us with a sword and a spear, he's defiling the armies of the living God. Hey, Joker, you come at me with a sword and a spear, but I come at you in the name of the Lord. That's the spirit of faith. Spirit of faith makes you, again, feel, one preacher said, it'll make you swing out over hell on a rope and spit right in the devil's eye. Let him know, this is where I live. Come visit. It's not arrogance. It's not cocky. It's a manifestation of the gift of the spirit that does something, and it produces miracles, raising of the dead, and so on. So healing, miracles, and faith are gifts that do. So remember, we're looking at the Bible, and it says there are diversities of gifts, right? Verse 4, there are various kinds of gifts. There are differences, verse 5, of ministries, and there are diversities of activities. So these gifts will do something, and they'll do something different than the other. Moving right along, because we want to talk about tongues tonight and the difference between praying in tongues and having a gift of tongues in a public setting. So Paul goes through and he talks about verse 12, and I've been talking to you guys about this the last couple of uh, sermons. Uh, As the body is one, has many members, but all members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. And then he talks about how you can't say if you're a foot, you can't say your hand, get out of here, I don't need you and so on and so on and so on. Then he comes through and he's talking about how God appointed these in the church, and this is where people miss it. They don't understand what the Bible's saying. And he goes through, do all prophesy, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all have the gifts of healings, do all speak with tongues. And people see, say right there, not everybody's going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Not everybody's going to pray in tongues. Honey, look at the context. He's not talking about praying in tongues. He's talking about the gift of speaking with another tongue and an interpretation of tongues. So your Baptist friends would have told you, well, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 29. And then again on in verse 30. Not everybody's going to. And then another one that they love is, and the Bible says tongues will cease. So that's already happened. Honey, that's talking about in heaven. That's talking about when Jesus comes back. That which is perfect has been revealed. We're not going to need to pray in tongues anymore when we're in heaven. Why? Because I don't need to speak in a mystery. I can talk to him face to face. Boomtown. <laughs> Amen. I mean, no separation. 
I was talking with Jason and Emily, I don't know, a few weeks ago. And we were just talking about heaven. And we were talking about eternity. And it's so difficult for us to wrap our minds around. Because every single aspect of our life has been ruled by limitations. And the limitations that have been brought on to this world because of Adam's fall. But <laughs> in the first moment that we're in heaven, all of those limitations are gone. There are none. There's no limitations at all. And our brain goes, ow, ow, stop. It hurts. <laughs> we can't even comprehend it. We cannot understand how good heaven is going to be. Because in order for us to do that, there are things that are unseen to our natural eye that take place in every 24 cycle of humans' lives we don't even know about. But yet in heaven, they're completely absent. They're not there. There's no gravity because there's no need. There's no time because there's no need. There's no light because there's no need. We're not going to have to go to bed and take a nap and wish we could turn our stories on and fall asleep on the sofa because there's no need. Every single limitation that's entered into the human race as a result of Adam's fall will be completely absent, totally lacking. It's crazy. Amen. So I don't need to pray in tongues there because I don't need to build myself up on my most holy faith. I can speak directly to God and I don't have to try to speak from spirit to spirit because I'll be right there and there'll be no disconnect, no separation. Moving right along, you okay? So in 13, he says, I can speak with tongues of men or I can speak with the tongue of angels, but if I don't have no love, then I'm a noisy little stinker. Sounding brass and a clanging cymbal, right? And he says, if I have the gift of prophecy and understand all the mysteries of all knowledge, no, if I have all faith. So he's going through and talking about some of, not all of, some of the gifts of the Spirit. He says, if I can do all those things, but I don't have love, I don't have anything. And we're not going to get into that about what love is, because you've all been to a wedding before. And so I imagine that you understood that. Paul says, verse 14, chapter 14, verse 1, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Pursue love and desire to desire, reach toward, hunger for spiritual gifts. Pastor Brian, how come I'm not used by the Holy Spirit? The Spirit, I have no idea, but you should ask the one who's passing them out. Amen. It's not me. Now, I'll, I'll know when there's a public gift that's supposed to manifest because the Lord will speak that to me and will bear witness in my heart and say, yeah, I don't know what they're going to say, but I'll know. Most of the time, Jamie will know, Pastor Dan will certainly know, Kent will certainly know. These people in the front row didn't just start coming yesterday. They, they've been around me and they've been around the move of the Holy Spirit. Art and I have had this conversation many times in the past. We just, you just, it's like something shifts. It's like you're looking at a slide and it just moves. And there's a new one. You're like, oh, that's going to happen. It's time to do that. And it just comes in. Amen? So the Holy Spirit's showing us these things. But sandwiched in between the gifts of the Spirit and the demonstration of the gifts of the Spirit and how to behave in church is love. Sometimes we don't look at how, how important that is. We just bypass it and say, well, you know, that's you know, the love chapter. In, in your best Barry White voice, it's like, that's the love chapter. But it's interesting that the gifts of the Spirit and the manifestation of the spirit of the spiritual gifts and the gifts of the Spirit and the release of the gifts of the Spirit in the church are sandwiched in between there is this love chapter. And that is because the gifts of the Spirit work by love. And faith works by love. So, maybe you don't love coming to church. Everybody's toes went like this. Get off my toes. Maybe you love coming to church. You just don't love the people that are coming with you. And I don't mean like in your car. I mean in other people's cars.
Maybe you don't love your pastor. Maybe you'd rather talk bad about your pastor than talk good about your pastor. I'm just, I'm just talking. I'm talking pretty good, though. How come? Well, I might be able to answer that question for you, but you should ask first. I mean, at least start. Holy Spirit, I go to a Pentecostal church, a Spirit-filled church. I pray in tongues. How come I'm not used in the gifts of the Spirit? It's not getting a ton of amens, but it's really good preaching. Pursue love. It's interesting that he put that in there again. Not just go after the spiritual gifts, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. You know, my mama told me this a long time ago. If you don't have anything nice to say, what is it? She was your mom too? (laughs) You know, a nice way of saying that is that way, but the other way is shut up. If you can't be nice, shut up. He who speaks in a tongue, verse 2, listen, this is important. He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Here's another key. 1 Corinthians 14, chapter 2 is a defining statement, and it's a qualifying statement, and it shines light for us to understand, what are you talking about, bro? Because 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 says, the manifestation of the Spirit. And now it says, he who's speaking in an unknown tongue, he's not speaking unto men, he's speaking unto God. But the, manifest of the Spirit, manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit are given to each one for the profit of all. And if I'm praying in tongues in the sanctuary in a public setting where it's a ministry gift of tongues, there has to be an interpretation that's joined to it. Why? Because nobody here knows what I just said, and neither do I. And now I'm not speaking to God. I'm speaking to man. And unless someone comes along and brings an interpretation to the public manifestation of the gift of the spirit of tongues that's not given as I will, I can't turn it on and turn it off. He is the one who says, now give this. And someone stands up and releases a tongue. And then you wait because now the Holy Spirit says, go give the interpretation. And that is so important that we understand if I'm praying in tongues, which is what we were doing here tonight, I'm not speaking to you. I'm not not singing to you. I'm not hoping you get it. I'm not hoping you get blessed. It has nothing to do with you. I'm not speaking to man. I'm speaking to... See, it's important that as we're reading this, we pay attention to the action and the direction of the language and who we're talking to. What does it mean when we're talking? So to set you up, when someone speaks in a tongue... He does not speak to men, but to God. No one understands him. However, in the spirit, that person is speaking a mystery. Are we talking about the personal gift of praying in tongues that anybody who's been filled with the Holy Spirit has the ability to do? Which Jude 20 says, you're building yourself up in your most holy faith when you're praying in the Holy Spirit not building others up when you're praying in the Holy Spirit. You're building yourself up. See the direction. If I'm using a public manifestation gift of the Holy Spirit with tongues and interpretation, you all are going to get stronger. You all are going to get help. You're going to get blessed. But if I'm praying in tongues in my prayer language, the glossolalia that's been given to me at my baptism, and it's a heavenly language that I can edify myself and build up myself, then of course... We must be talking about something that's different. We can't be talking about the same thing. We must be talking about something different. I'm preaching pretty good. He who prophesies, this is that verse when I said New Testament prophecy. He who prophesies 
speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort. So a prophecy is a New Testament gift of the Holy Spirit, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 7. And that is to edify and comfort and then admonish and strengthen the body. So it's a gift of the Spirit. So I can't just walk around prophesying to people as I want to. <laughs> I wish I was I, I want to spike my phone on the ground right now. I wish I had time to unpack that because everybody who's got a dog or a donkey walks around braying like a mule, like a little jack, you know what? And I got a word for you, brother. I got a word for you, sister. Well, why don't you take that word and go back to the Holy Spirit and make sure it's from him because doubt it is. Be careful, people who prophesy to you in a corner. I feel an anointing coming on me to preach for a long time tonight. Be careful, someone wants to catch you. Oh, 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 I got. I want to say something to you out in the parking lot where there's no elders, no pastors, no deacons, no ushers. You just listen. Hate me if you want. Just write that down. Put it someplace where you can find it when you need it. You'll need it. We're going to look on. You don't get to prophesy when you want to. You don't get to turn that on and turn that off. It's not yours. It's as the Spirit wills. And just because you did it once doesn't mean you get to do it all the time. Because it's as the spirit wells and he delivers or distributes that's what that means to distribute to each one individually as he wills just because you did once doesn't mean you're going to tomorrow amen moving right along we're out of time already i was just going to go on right on through to revelation chapter (laughs) revelation chapter 20 you, you just keep going, you said? Okay, then here we go. He who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. And we know that we prophesy by the Spirit of God, by His will being released. Verse 4, but he speaks into a tongue or speaks in tongues, edifies himself. Well, the manifestation of the gift of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. And then praying in tongues, speaking in tongues, this speaking in tongues edifies myself. But, 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 but when I prophesy, just right in the last part of the verse, part B when, I, B, when I prophesy, I edify the church. When I pray in tongues, I edify me. Well, we must be talking about something different. Because the public gift of tongues and interpretation is to help the body. It's not to help me to help the body so we must be talking about something different well why are you taking the time to unpack this because not every tongue has to be interpreted in fact i'm going to give you one find me this is interesting we know that they manifested find me tongues and interpretation of tongues in the new testament i'm going to save you some time not there it's not there We don't have it recorded. Did it manifest? Of course it did. Is it recorded? Nope. Interesting. Think back on the day of Pentecost when the Spirit of God was poured out on those 120 people in the upper room. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They all prayed with other tongues. Where's the interpretation? How come no one came along and said, "Ah, ah, 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 ah." not around here, you're not going to do that. Not unless you give an interpretation. If not, you just shut up. There must be something different. There must be a diversity of gifts and a diversity of menstruation. There must be a difference in what it is that this gift can do. Various kinds of gifts. That's like someone can get healed from a toenail and they can get healed from terminal cancer. Same gift, diversity of uses of various types. You can get healed from COVID-19. <laughs> and you can get 
healed from the common flu. And if you have the flu, I'm just saying, you ought to put some faith on that because that kills more people than COVID-19 does. Just saying. Don't just lay down and say, well, you know, bless the Lord, the flu. It's flu season. Not at my house, it ain't flu season. Someone came to this church and obviously had the flu. And uh, I was introducing myself to this person because that's what had happened. I was fortunate to be able to shake their hand. And so I went to shake their hand, and they said, oh, you don't want to touch me. I have the flu. And I said, I can tell you I have the flu. And she said, I'm They said, <laughs> she said, well, you don't want to touch me. I said, I don't get the flu. And I shook her hand. And she said, what do you mean you don't get the flu? Um, let me see how I can make this work for you. I don't get the flu. Well, I had the flu. You shook my hand. You better go wash your hands. Well, I'm not going to lick my hand, but I'm also not going to run and go and wash my hands. I don't get the flu. Why? Because I can beat it, and I learned how to beat it. I'm preaching pretty good. We really do have to stop. It's midnight. (laughs) He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. This is what Jude verse 20 is talking about. Edify yourself. Edify yourself. I'm edifying myself. I'm edifying the body. I'm edifying myself. Well, why in the world would you just sit around all by yourself and pray in tongues? Oh, I don't know. To edify myself. To build myself. To strengthen myself. To encourage myself. Paul sat there (laughs) giving an account. He said, I think myself happy. They said, you are a madman. You have lost your mind and you say things that we just don't get what you are saying. And here you tell us you think yourself happy. I imagine Paul, it's not written, but I imagine he said, well, it's better than thinking myself sad. How many people do you, <clears throat> how many of you, how many, I liked it the other way too, don't worry. How many people do you know that think themselves angry or think themselves irritable or sad paul said i think myself oh so that means that i can control whether i'm happy or not man i am preaching so good i owe myself at least three offerings already i think myself so i'm edifying myself why wouldn't i sit around by myself and pray in tongues I don't want to sit around with you and pray in tongues. It ain't going to do you any good. Let me say that again because it's important. Don't lose it and think I'm being silly. Why wouldn't I sit around by myself and pray in tongues? Why would I call Kent and Bonnie over and say, hey, you guys want to come sit down? I'm going to pray in tongues at you. I ain't going to do anything for them at all. They're going to sit there and go, my pastor's filled with the Holy Ghost, obviously. So the question that you're not asking, but I just answered is, you should pray in tongues by yourself. Why? Because you're edifying yourself. When you're praying in tongues in church, you're not doing it for the person in front of you or behind you. They don't get anything out of it. You do. Why wouldn't I pray in tongues by myself? People say, how come, how come you, when I come over and talk to you, how come we don't pray in tongues together? Well, that's weird. Same reason I don't make out with you, you weirdo. I told you more than once, Jamie, knock it off. It's weird. Why would I sit around with you and pray in tongues? You're just going to sit there and stare at me? Well, this is awkward. Paul said, I wish you all spoke with tongues. He said, but even more, I wish that you prophesied. What's about to happen here is about to be another one of those defining moments which gives us definition and understanding that is a key that opens up some things to help us understand what's happening. Paul's talking to the church in Corinth and he said, You guys got to stop doing this because you're putting on a personal show. See, 
manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit are not necessarily badges of honor from God that say, look at how spiritual they are. Why? Because everyone should prophesy. Everyone should pray in tongues. How do I know? Because we just read it. Brethren, I would that you all spoke with tongues. But, but, I would even more so that you would all prophesy. See, what was happening in the church of Corinth is, check me out, man. I'm brother super spiritual. I'm flowing in the gifts. There's an aura following me. Step back and get out of the way. Don't get too close. I'm going to go park my cloud out back and come down to planet Earth with you lowly people. And that's what was happening. That's exactly what was happening. And the church was saying, oh, my Lord, look at them. They pray in tongues. They're used in the gifts of the Spirit. They are just dreamy. Super Christian. Super spiritual. This is child's play. This is beginner stuff. Now, do I rejoice when the Spirit of God uses me and I'm able to be used in a gift of the Spirit? Well, of course I do. But I don't walk around and say, did you see me? Did you see what happened tonight? Yeah, you think you're good. Did you see what God did through me tonight? Check me out. This is baby stuff. This is everybody who's in the boat should be doing this stuff. Amen. I should have quit it. I'm not going to make out with Jamie. <laughs> he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with a tongue, unless indeed the tongue is interpreted. Why? So that the church may receive edification. So, is this talking about prayer? Or is this talking about ministry? This is talking about ministry. How do I know? Because prayer is from me to God. And ministry is from God to me or through me to somebody else. So, if I'm prophesying, I'm not talking to myself. I don't walk around and just say encouraging things to myself. You know what? You're going to make it. No, it's by the Spirit of God. And I'm not saying I don't prophesy to myself. And I don't prophesy as I want to. I prophesy as the Spirit of God wills. And it's supposed to encourage you. Now, if you heard what the Lord said today, and that was I'm I, to some of you, not all of you, but to some of you, I miss you walking in this deep. It's good to see you around here. That ought to have said, Bless God, I'm going to do that a little bit more often. They encourage, it ought to have encouraged you. Well, how do I know if it's a New Testament prophecy? And how do I test the spirits to see if it's of the Spirit of God? Because it left you edified. It brought glory to the Lord. It didn't say, you know, I've noticed that you, you all are doing real good and start praying in tongues, and you just need to come to church and hang out with Pastor Brian more often. No, it was glorifying God drawing us to God, edifying us, and putting a want to. It really is nine. What do I do? What do I do now? How long have I been preaching? Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Jason. I need to know how long I've been preaching. 45 minutes? He's officially not an elder. Look how fast that happened. Can you give me a time? <laughs> Emily, he's always answering questions I'm not asking. Here, let me get on Facebook and find out how long it's been going. Does anybody have that right there in front of them? That's what I thought, 45 minutes. All right, I'm done. If you come back next Wednesday... 
I'll finish this. The Lord says, soar with the eagles. Then Jason Miller shows up. It's 9 o'clock. It's 9 o'clock. Oh, okay. That's what that 9.00 means. All right, I see what you're working with back there. Did you get anything out of this? Lord, help Jason. Lord, I've said this probably 10,000 times, and I've said it here a lot. But it really is amazing what you'll learn if you read. I mean, it really is amazing what you can learn if you just read the Bible. But just look at it and read it. So that's why I pray always over our time together and my personal time. Don't let me look at this with eyes I've already seen it with. No, let me see this new. Let me see this different. There's got to be another angle. Because you're the author and you're the teacher, we have total faith. You know the subject matter. You know what it is we're discussing. You didn't even have to go study it. So we thank you that I believe tonight you've opened up our eyes even a little bit more. We didn't get it all. I've probably preached on the gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12 and 14 500 times. I still don't have it all. But thank you that I got a little bit more tonight. And it was good. Thank you for this time that we've had together in your house. We bless your holy and majestic name. And we love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ushers, if you'd Stand and help the people on the inside here. Um, If you're streaming with us, we've said this to you many times. If you're wanting to mail in your tithe or the offering that the Lord's put in your heart, uh, please do that. Send it to P.O. Box 876, Owasso, Michigan. Daily, it seems like we have mail coming in and money's coming in with uh, that mail. So thank you for your faithfulness. And uh, if you're streaming and online and want to give, ncconline.com. On the lower right-hand corner of the screen, click the Rebel Give icon, and uh, that will take you there to to give the Lord's tithe or an offering or whatever it is that you want to do. And we are in the building, so if you want to drop it off, you can make arrangements to do that. Many of you have been doing that for a few weeks now, even more, so thank you. Amen. Lord, receive the worship. We freely offer this to you. I can honestly say, and it's a decision that we can come to, all of us, but I can honestly say I've never given an offering and I've never tithed where I said, boy, I wish I had that money. I've never done that. May I never. But that's, I'm not bragging on myself. I'm saying we, we, no one's putting a gun to our head. We're doing this because we want to. We're doing this because we love to. We're doing this to worship you and to honor you and to bless you. We're doing this to show ourselves that you really are our God and we really are your people. We're doing this to bring glory and honor to who you are and your hand of protection and provision in our life. So we thank you. I thank you that everyone giving tonight that the gift and the giver are both blessed in Jesus' name. That you cause it to come back. Jesus said some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. That's what Jesus said. Not everybody has to give up house, lands, or family to get a 30, 60, or 100 fold return. But it does require us to do it more than just once and do it with the right heart and the right way. I ask, Father, as a pastor, that you'd continue to teach me how to communicate to your people giving offerings and tithing is not a deduction it kicks open the door and says come on in and pour out a blessing we don't at least around here 
We don't receive offerings to pay bills. We don't receive offerings to get the money. We do it because we want to love and honor you. And we want to worship you. And we want to open up a natural platform that you can demonstrate your supernatural provision upon. So we build that platform with our faith and our obedience to you. And we do that, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Ushers, if you'll serve the people. Uh, we talked about this now a couple of times, but we're at $100,123.02 for our mortgage. We're actually, that's not accurate. We're under that pretty, probably about 500 or maybe even more uh, already. So we are, we are under $100,000 on our principal. Praise the Lord. And uh, uh, on Sunday, we're going we're gonna to do a, kind of a graduation commencement sermon for our seniors. Um, some of our seniors won't have an opportunity to graduate. Uh, that's stupid and terrible and all for what. But uh, we're going to do what we can here. It's not the same, but it's something. And uh, we purchased some gifts to give them from the church. Uh, and Miss Feedy's getting cake, so most anything goes good when you have cake, said the fat guy. But it's going to be a good time. But I, I do want to say this to you tonight because I might not take a lot of time on Sunday depending on how uh, how many guests we have. You know, sometimes it's bad form to talk about specific things in front of company. You wouldn't sit around and talk about the balance of your checkbook in front of me if I was at your house. I wouldn't expect you to, right? So we don't, it's kind of bad form to do that. So if there's a whole bunch of folk here on Sunday, we won't discuss this. But I want you to do this. This is what I feel like the Lord is talking to me about. I want you to just begin to seek the Lord. Now, if you need to fast to get distracting voices away from you, then do that. Um, if you can hear from the Lord in, in just simple prayer or praying in the Holy Spirit would be a good thing, especially the people who came forward and received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Don't ever stop praying in tongues. Uh, that would be a good place to start. Um, I want you to pray about what the Lord would have you to do. I really think, I really believe, uh, I just don't think it's that, it's, it, it's doable. It's really doable. And, and I don't think that every person or every family, every household in our church can give $1,000 toward the mortgage in the next six months. I, I'm not even pretending that. But I believe every family in this church, and I say that intentionally, Every family in this church can give something. This is yours. I'm your pastor, and you're part of my flock, and this is your house, and this is your leadership and eldership team, and associate pastor and pastor and flock care ministers. And everybody can give something. Uh, and that's between you and the Lord. But I want you to begin to seek the Lord on that. And... Uh, I'm praying on whether or not we'll do some sort of a pledge or what, but I really, I really believe it. I, I do. Um, you know, Jamie said 100,000 people could give one dollar, and uh, we'd have the whole thing done. That's probably not the way to do it, but we can pray on that. Um, but I, I think that we can. I, I'm, I'm careful how I say this. I'm not going to tell you how much money I've given to the mortgage, but it's substantial. And the reason that I say that is, is I'm asking you to do something that I'm not doing. I got some serious skin in this game, too. And, and uh, things that I could do other things with the money, too. And what I'm requiring of myself, and not in the flesh or the arm of the flesh, is to make some sacrifices. And I hate to use that word in relationship to giving, although it's biblical, because so many people play that card. You know, you just need to give sacrificially. Well, yeah, every single time I'm in your building, I need to give sacrificially. It's called a budget, bro. Get a calculator. You know what I mean? But this, I think this is a, a I think this is an opportunity for our church 
to stand together and to say, Father, we believe you collectively. We're going to do something. You're going to lead us in what it is, and you're going to bring it back to us in the same season. So begin to pray if you haven't already. And uh, if, if you don't want to be involved, just if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Amen? Is that fair? Did I handle that appropriately? It's what's in my heart. And uh, I just, I keep, I keep saying this to the Lord, and I keep hearing it from the Lord. It's not that big of a number. It's just not that big of a number. It's a really big number for me by myself. Couldn't do it, in fact, in six months. I don't have enough plasma. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the TVs. I'm talking about the stuff they get from my blood. I just don't have enough. But it's not that big of a number. We have 200 people that go to our church. It's not that big of a number. Amen? And so even if you're not going to give, could you adapt that? That's not that big of a number. We can do that. Jesus is calling. All right, stand up with me. You've been here so long. You've been so nice. If I could ever get some time management down, we'd get you out of here a little earlier. I actually can. I'm balancing what you need. And uh, I'd like to strap you in and make you stay longer, but I can't do that. Praise the Lord. Father, we love you and we worship you. Thank you for sweet sleep on our bed. We curse restlessness and we curse sleeplessness and we curse racing minds and we curse uh, thoughts that just run all night long. Brain, stop it. Be quiet and go to sleep. Body, be quiet and go to sleep. Spirit, you be at peace. You be ministered to by the Spirit of God and the presence of God, the residing presence of the Lord. We thank you, Father, for everything that's been done here. This has been a great night, I think, and just a great time in church. Thank you for the Word. I think we've learned some things and seen some things, and you've expounded some things and helped us. We bless you tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I dismiss you, I want to say... Uh, Dale and Jamie and Kent and Jim have been working on these panels and making them just right. I think they look pretty slick. That's a lot of work sitting there, a lot of hours. <laughs> Amen. Pastor Dana and I were talking about, what do you guys, do you think we should do? So we had Art and Jamie and Dale and the same people, but at Art, because he was off. Art works all day. And uh, we sat down here on the stage. said, what do you guys think about, you know, ripping this whole entire thing out? And they said, yeah, let's do it. I said, slick. And then all this was built like in two days. I'm like, slow down. But we got folks around here that are willing to work and, and do a great job with the work that they do, and, and I'm thankful for that. Amen. You guys don't know it, but, I mean, any imagine anything that goes wrong with the production. I'm like, Shelly Baxter, fix it. And then she does. And it doesn't always happen in like a minute. She has to come into the building, and Jason and Emily are constantly working. We just have a real thank you. Is what I'm trying to say is thank you to everybody who works so hard. Feedy and Bonnie come to the building and put up with Jim and Kent. It's not easy. And they help. Hey, Kim, are we done? Are we done with the, I don't have the dates in front of me. My iPad died. And if I have my phone, it's gone too. Jamie took my phone. He's done. Are we done collecting pop cans for the um, Welcome Home Veterans? So if you saw my post that I put out on Facebook, on my own Facebook, and then I shared it on the church's Facebook, Welcome Home Veterans, Kim actually, Bowen owns that uh, nonprofit, and we're going to begin sharing a little bit more about what that is and what we're doing, but we're helping veterans in our community, and uh, the, the nonprofit, I'm part of the board, Brent's part of the board, and um, the uh, nonprofit has bought uh, the school in, in Bancroft and renovating that, and it's going to be lots of money. 
And so there's fundraisers that we do, and the COVID-19 garbage has stopped some of that. Um, there's going to be a golf outing in July up in Chesning at Twin Brooks. And so if you want to be a part of a golf scramble, all that money is going to go to help the veterans and finish up the facilities. But um, you can't return your pop cans right now. And so instead of throwing them away or collecting them by the bag pole in your garage, uh, you can bring them here. We can make arrangements with Brent and with Kim, or you can make arrangements with them directly. Um, but I want to do all we can to help the people who served our country. Amen. Your governor, by the way, never mind. <laughs> hey, I love you. I'll see you later. You're dismissed. free.